Hey y'all, welcome to the Pungo Prairie. About a year ago, I uploaded to my YouTube channel here a video uh, from a Saskatchewan white-tailed deer hunt I went on 20 years ago, back in 2004. And that video was part one of a two-part series uh, called Pass the Buck. And the title of that video was The Resolve, part one. And the reason that it was called The Resolve is that I had made my mind up that I wasn't going to take a buck that year unless I believed it to be at least a 170 class Boone and Crockett whitetail. And that was a very uh, test, very strong test on my resolve because as if you watch that video, and I'm going to put the link to it uh, down in the comment section, or not the comment section, but the description section of this video. You might want to go back and watch that one before you watch this one. But one thing I want to mention to you about the deer we're hunting up there. These are all wild, uh, totally wild deer. They're in wilderness settings. There's no high fences. There's no food plots that have been planted uh, to increase uh, the, the body weights or mineral supplements to uh, enhance antler growth like there is on a lot of these reserves. These are totally wild what you see is what you get, natural, totally natural deer. And one thing about it um, that we found interesting is more often than not, when we came across a wolf kill, it would be a big, majestic, very desirable trophy buck. And the reason for that is that these animals, they are competing so hard. They're fighting each other for dominance. They're running off young rivals uh, to try to get established um, an order for the breeding rights uh, of the most fit animals to the does and continue on with the species. So as a result, they really get themselves run down during the rut. Uh, they become very weakened, they leave, uh, lose a lot of body weight, and therefore they become more susceptible to the wolves. And another thing I want to tell you is, that, remember this video uh, was shot 20 years ago. The one you're seeing now was shot 19 years ago. Uh, except of course for this part and technology back then uh, wasn't what it is today um, there wasn't the cr uh, really crisp clarity uh, of the shots plus one thing you'll notice that on the snowy scenes when there's snow falling and if I'm trying to reach out there 150 to 200 yards with a telephoto lens of the camera all that snow falling gets compacted and kind of blurs the picture so that's what the deal is with that. But anyway, here it is now. Pass the buck, part two, Destiny's Hunt. And if you want to see how it all turned out, don't go nowhere, cause you don't want to miss this. Ain't that right, Tally girl? hard to believe that it's been a whole year since I've been sitting here on a deer stand in northern Saskatchewan. Hi, I'm Bill Dixon. I wonder if this will be the year when I'll finally have an opportunity for that big 170 class Boone and Crockett whitetail hunting here out of Poplar Point. I think back on last season when I had opportunity to take several really nice trophies. But when you made your mind up that you won't settle for anything less than a 170 or better class deer, and even though they may be mighty impressive, when a 145 or 150 comes in, well, you really have no other choice than to simply pass the buck.
I had arrived late to my stand location on my first day of the hunt. Barry Deven, Keith Height, and I had taken time earlier that morning to check the accuracy of our guns after the day before his flight from the U.S. I began my hunt from the same hilltop box blind as I had the previous year. I wasn't settled in for very long before the action started to unfold. It was just a little afternoon when this doe came walking in. I checked her back trail. It's a good thing for that old boy. It's the first day instead of the last. Wow, what a pretty buck. He's got good mass, great spread, great width. He's just a little short on his brow tines and overall tine length. Nevertheless, it's a really nice buck. What a great way to start the hunt. Hey, you in the box. Don't let him hurt me. What a picture. I just love it when you get actors that want to cozy up to the camera. That was up close and personal right there now. Just as I was packing it in, as darkness was coming on, a very interesting buck appeared from the bush on the left. He appeared to have good potential. On the way out, guide Jody Goodfellow asked if I would like to film the remainder of Gary Clevenger's hunt. I suggested that we come back to this location in the morning.
It's not the one we're looking for, though. He's a beauty, though. Gary, that's what, two shots we've heard in the last 10, 15 minutes? Yep, I think it's our turn. Quarter after 12? Yep. That's that time of day? Yep. It's a nice buck, it's a nice long brow tight. Yeah. Just ain't got enough horns, so it doesn't. Not, not quite enough. Yeah, it's still a nice buck, though. I can't believe I'm letting deer like this go. Figuring anything I've ever killed. Unbelievable. A super deer. Come down here to pose for you. Yeah, yeah. About 2.30, I was beckoned to interview the other successful hunters in camp. Gary decided to move back to where he had seen a nice 4x4 late on the previous afternoon. Father and son, Dan and Chino from Tampa, Florida. Chino, what you got there, old boy? Got a little spoil point. I waited four days for that. That's a pretty buck. Six by six? Six by six. Yeah. Dan, you know, oh boy, what do, you, what do you got there? Little, uh, little ten point. Vicks Peak, right? Five by five, Vicks Peak, yep. Went yeah. there three days and finally this old boy came out. Well, pretty work. Congratulations, fellas. It's a beautiful, beautiful hunt. Thank you. Thank you, Bill. Michael Timchuk from Tampa, Florida on what your first Saskatchewan hunt huh? Very first one. Tell us a little bit about it. Well it was an exciting hunt. I waited three, three and a half days to find this little thing here. And he's uh, got how many points, measurable it's, points? It's uh, huh? 14 points. 14 points. Have you all scored him? Did a rough score on him yet? A rough score came out to about uh, 167 and 7 eighths. Well that's pretty work. Congratulations Mike. Thank you. You coming back? Always. Pretty work. The boys from New York. We got one from what? Long Island. Long Island, yep. And one from Mariah, which is upstate with a pretty pair of Saskatchewan whitetail bucks. Veteran hunter Leon Moisen with a nice, I don't know, would you call it a 4x4? Four four? He's got a little crab claws on the end there. What are yep. you going to count him, Leon? Eight. Eight pointer. Eight. Yep. Dave, this is your first Saskatchewan hunt? Yes, it is. Tell us a little bit about it. Well, it was a learning process. I plan on perfecting it in my next time and double in the size. Well, that's a pretty five by five you got there. Thank you. Pretty work, fellas. That's one group of happy hunters right there now.
After discussing strategy for the following morning's hunt, Gary decided to return to the hilltop box blind, where we were the day before. Sure, it's a beautiful morning God gave us here, isn't it? Oh, it's a wonderful morning. It's great to be out here. That old big one be here a little bit. Yeah. I can't wait. She's looking at something. Yeah. He's a beauty, though. We have to have a little entertainment before the main event. <laughs> yeah. you know. I think this is the main event. <laughs> the posture of the small bucks on the far hill suggested to us that something was up. The buck that had just stepped out, I was pretty sure it was the same one that I had seen right at dark two days prior. If you decide to take him, give me a little warning, okay? I can take him through the shoulder right now. I got the steer in front of him, so be careful about that. I'd like to get a broadside shot too. Well, he's down. Uh, what a beautiful buck. Whew. It's worth the wait. He was, was five a, minutes late. I oh, said 9.45. It's 9.50. Man, 9 it was worth the wait. What a beautiful deer. Oh, my Lord. I've passed up so, so many deer this week, and I said, whew, here it is the last day. And Oh, man. What a beautiful deer. Whew. Well, <laughs> we get settled down a little bit. We'll go down and get a good look at him up close. Okay. Nice shot. Planted him right there. That little 25 cracked him, didn't it? Yes, it did. Yes, it did. All right. Beautiful. <laughs> is that a tear of joy running oh, down man, your right I'm cheek? You. <laughs> it's cold. That's what it is. <laughs> I think it's a little tear of joy. Uh, maybe. Maybe so. A beautiful deer, man. It was worth the wait. It was worth the wait, man. Good for you. Oh, man. Now, I know you got to be happy with that. Look oh, at all that extra goodness. stuff. Last day buck, man. I'll tell you, beautiful. It's been a long wait. How what you like that split day. brow? Huh? How you like that split brow? I love it. What a beautiful deer. Well, let's get him all set up, and we'll get some good up-close shots of him there. Last-minute reprieve there, huh, Gary? Yeah, man. I'll tell you what. It's a beautiful buck. It was worth the wait. Tell us a little bit about your week. It's been a been a great week. It's probably the most enjoyable hunt that I've ever had in my lifetime. Uh, just deer every day and uh, passed up a lot of deer and uh, just hung on down to the wire. And uh, this this guy here showed up this morning. So 
I couldn't be happier. Well, Fantastic we, hunt. We had some nice entertainment beforehand, but I apologize. I told you the deer was coming in at 945, and he didn't get in here till 952. I know. I was getting a little disappointed. <laughs> <laughs> well, pretty work. Congratulations. Well, thank you, Bill. I've been a joy, uh, real enjoyable experience hunting with you. And thank you for letting me sit in the blind with you two days. I'll tell you what, you're a great company, and I enjoyed it. Pretty work. Fantastic, thank you. Congratulations. Couldn't be happier. <clears throat> well, I'll tell you, I'll tell them girls some good coffee. Tastes pretty good right now. A little celebration. Yes, right? indeed. Fantastic. Since we would be waiting for some time for guys Jody and Luke to come for us, we decided to get back into the blind and see what else might come in. We had left Gary's buck waiting to be picked up right where it had fallen. We were treated to an encore performance by another buck. Trying to figure it all out. Yeah. yeah. Well, he's, he's sniffing and checking if he's pulling. Look at him. He's fighting. Crazy jumping on him. Fighting in your deer. Oh, hey. you got to be kidding. Now, where do you get to see that? <laughs> he says, that's for the time you got me, sucker. That's right. A very happy Gary Clevenger replayed in his mind the events of his successful hunt as he and Jody packed his buck out of the bush. There will certainly be a celebration feast in camp tonight. After filming the Sunday morning sunrise, I headed a few miles north of camp to the Woody Wolf stand, so as to size up potential for the Monday morning hunt, where I would be accompanying Keith Height. There was good sign in the area, lots of rubs and a few scrapes. Thin ice around some of the beaver pond crossings prevented us from accessing some of our historically successful spots further back into the bush. Keith's hunt so far had not produced sightings of any good bucks. 
being that he was down to his last two days. I wanted him to spend them where the odds for a good buck were more to his favor. After some deliberation. Since I had sighted that nice 5x5 five five on my first day from the hilltop box, we decided to make that our venue on Monday morning. Still, we were not seeing a good buck. We decided we needed a special lure. Whoa, could that be cookies and cocoa? <laughs> We had hoped that with one more cool night, the ice would tighten up enough so as to get Keith into the skybox at Olson Lake for his final day. It just wasn't to be. So we struck out for Lost Lake. Keith's hunt continued to be consistent as before. We tried pulling out all the stops, but still, just one doe and a small buck. We did see a glimpse of a good rack buck moving through the back, but it just didn't come in. Unfortunately, Keith went home without his buck. Well, you know the saying. That's why they call it hunting. The thin ice that had previously prevented us backcountry access had finally tightened up. So the next morning, while Keith was flying high on a jet plane back to his family in Duncannon, Pennsylvania for Thanksgiving, I saddled a quad for the long cold ride in to Olson. There had been good buck activity throughout most of the day. And as I was packing up one of my cameras about five o'clock, I noticed this buck checking the trail coming in from my left. It's a really nice five by five. It's tall. It's got good mass. Great brow tines. Take another look.
think I'm going to wait, though. Boy, things are heating up here at Olsen late in the evening. Another smaller buck just came out on the same trail. These seven different bucks, eight counting that last one that just walked out. Keith, I wish you were here. That would have made a nice buck for you. Pretty buck. Things are definitely getting interesting here late. On Thanksgiving morning, I returned to the skybox. As I had in my morning devotion, the deer started moving below. It must have been somewhere around noon I heard a shot. I knew that George Shiflet was way back at the end of Blue Lake. The shot came from that direction. As the afternoon passed on, I thought of Keith and the great buck that I had seen the evening before. I really did wish that they could have connected. Saturday morning was frosty and overcast. I was positioned 40 feet up a poplar tree at a spot called the Beehive. Carl Redneck Thompson was way back in at the end of Glue Lake where George had met with success the previous day. I had heard Redneck shoot soon after shooting light and he reported on his radio of taking a great buck. My day was getting interesting as well. He's looking at something over there, off to the left. Could be another nice buck getting ready to step out. That is so pretty. His attention though. Really pretty. Coming back in. That is so cool. The smaller bucks leaving. Maybe that bigger one is going to circle around and come on in. It's a really, really nice 5x5. Five five. Real even all the way around. Pretty good spread on him too. Just not the big ombre that I'm looking for. Nevertheless, he's a pretty buck. I'd like to put my gun on him just so that I can say I could have had that one. <sighs> this hot apple cider it's hitting the spot right about now. Carl Thompson 
from Circleville, West Virginia. Better known to your closer friends as Redneck. That's a pretty last day buck you have there, Carl. Look at the mass on that and the character. How many days did you sit? I sit four. I took a day off. I was sick one day. Well, that's tough when you come up here and have to miss a day because you're under the weather. But, um, my goodness, that is really one beautiful Saskatchewan buck. And, and you got to hunt uh, some days and see some other deer. Tell us a little bit about your hunt. It was great. I had a pretty eventful days every day. Saw lots of bucks. Passed up a couple really super nice bucks. Just, they just wasn't what I was after. And the last day, I mean, Luke went out. This one came into the stand, and he had just what I wanted, a little bit of character, nice points, just a nice, super nice buck. And you shot uh, fairly early. You wasn't in the stand long yesterday morning when you shot that. No, I was probably in the stand probably 35, 40 minutes. Well, pretty work. Congratulations. That's a real fine trophy for you to take back home to Circleville. Thank you, Bill. Bob Smith and George Shiflett from Weir's Cave, Virginia. Now that is a mighty fine pair of Thanksgiving Day bucks, fellas. George, tell us a little bit about your hunt. Well, went in yesterday morning and got in up the stand. And hadn't seen but a couple there the day before and it was just like a parade. The deer was coming from every which way. And finally this one come out. And, well, you can see from there, here he is. How many, um, uh, Jerry, you think you saw on that stand yesterday morning? Uh, at least nine, ten bucks, four or five days. And what time of day did you shoot? Uh, twelve twenty. Well, that's a pretty buck. Congratulations! You almost had a little drop time starting down there on that left uh, left beam. Yeah, yeah. That's... Tur just turn him side to side a little bit. Back, back the other way. There you go. That's a pretty deer right there. Thank you, Bob Smith. Now that's a fine buck. What time of day did you shoot? Oh, I think about uh, two, two ten, something like that. Uh, hold, hold his head up for us just a little bit. Yeah. He <laughs> get a little stiff out here after been sitting overnight, huh? Yeah. Well, is this your uh, this is your second poplar point buck, isn't it? Yep, sure is. Uh, well, uh, you, you, yeah, and he's he's bigger than the last one. Yeah, oh. he, yeah, he is. Got a lot of mass, a lot going on there. Well, congratulations, fellas. Thanks a lot. Peggy Kessner and her coach, J.D. McCurdy from the Shenandoah Valley of Virginia. Looks like you got the patriarch there, the old man. You had a special name for him. What's your name for him? Diamond for Diamond in the Rough. And J.D. was sitting with you and coached you onto that, that big old trophy buck there. I don't know how old he might be. Has anybody made a guess on it? I heard between six and a half and seven and a half. Well, I think probably at least seven and a half. And he's got how many points? 14. How many deer did you see on that stand yesterday? Mm, three bucks, a couple does. And the action didn't get started till late though, right? No, that was first thing in the morning. Oh. And then a four pointer and a six pointer came back and then nothing. And then that one came in late. Yeah, actually we saw him sitting over in the bushes. We couldn't tell what he was. And you and J.D. took a vote, though, after he stepped out and said, this is the one. It was a unanimous decision. Well, good job coaching her, J.D. Peggy, congratulations, sweetheart. Thank you very much. Beautiful deer. Thank you. Boy, that'll get your heart pounding. Big old boy stepped out right there below me. Saw those 
long G3s. A minute there, I thought he might be the one. Wow. Just a young deer, though. Not much mass. Sure one was G2s. Nevertheless, <laughs> that was pretty exciting there for a minute. This snowy morning reminded me of another snowy morning two seasons prior when the buck I shot turned out to be actually a bit smaller than I thought. Hello, little doe. Good morning. She just can't quite figure me out. You're so graceful. Each move so deliberate. There's a buck. Just slipping out of the edge of the poplars there. Looks like a four by four. There's another buck off to the left. That's a five by five. Tall, good mass. That's a real nice buck. Turn to the side for me. Oh yeah, he looks good. What do you think? It's about 100 yards down there to where he's standing. I checked my gun yesterday. It was about an inch high at that distance. If I hold the crosshairs just between his shoulder blades and at the base of his neck, I believe I can drop him in his tracks. It was still a pretty rack, and it looks great on my wall. Blue Lake has always been a lucky spot for me. I think I'll head there tomorrow. I got all set up in the same location where George and Redneck had scored. The weather was still in my favor. On the other hand, the wolves had moved in, and as a result, I had only seen a few deer in the last couple of days. This really looked to be a great setup, and I was optimistic despite the wolves. The hours passed on, and still all that would come in were does and small family groups.
snow's really coming down good now. Hope it piles up. It's that old big boy in here. Those little guys are getting fidgety. Something's definitely got them stirred up. And then out of nowhere, there he stood. I was nervous, really nervous. My camera was all over the place and I was trying to get actually both of them set up. He was approximately 165 yards out. So I zoomed up as far as I could with the camera. Thank you, Jesus. Whew. He's down. That's a nice buck. I didn't have much time. Oh, wow. Well, let's go down and get a good look at him up close. Oh, he's down. Definitely done. Definitely done. Wow, look at that. What a buck. What a nice buck. Well, let's get him a little closer to the camera. Get a little self interview. Well, it's been kind of a slow day here in the way back in their stand in Glue Lake. As far as buck activity is concerned, there hasn't been much, but uh, saw. Quite a few does with their fawns and just kept working around in here. Uh, Carl Thompson, better known as Redneck, took a real nice 156 buck in here the other day and as did George Shiflet. And I just wanted to get back in here and check it out. He's one, two, three, four, five, six on this side. Got a little kicker started here. And he's one, got a little kicker, two, three, four, five, six, and a brow over here. Nice deer. I'm very happy with this. What a wonderful adventure it has been here at Poplar Point for these last two seasons in my quest for a 170 class buck. These events, especially of this day, I will see over again and again in my mind's eye, God willing for many seasons to come.
well, buck action was pretty slow in that way back in there stand at Glue Lake yesterday. Didn't see anything all day, but does and their fawns, little family groups. This old boy stepped out of the bush at quarter to five, but I knew it looked like a good spot. George and, and Redneck had both taken nice bucks out of there this past week. It's like I've always said here, Poplar Point, you can have a slow day, then all of a sudden, the big old boy can step out of nowhere. You just never know. I don't think he's going to make 170, probably in the 160s for sure. But when you're an Easterner from Virginia Beach, Virginia, and a big old boy like this steps out, struts his stuff in front of you, it's hard to say, pass the buck.